It's time for that October reading wrap-up, starting with our two-star reviews. Wild Moon by C.R. Jane and Mila Young. I read two and a half books in this series and all of it really sucked. I knew I didn't like it after I read the first book, but I really wanted to see the like bad rejected me get punished and or get like some more explanations on why she had been like bound and kept away from her wolf form. So that got me to read about one and a third more book than I probably should have. Another lesson to me that I should trust whether or not I like something and DNF it right away instead of trying to like continue to power through to make some kind of point or learn something. I did originally pick this up because it's book one in the Kingdom of Wolf series. By the time you get to the third book in this series it spins off into its own thing, which is like a weird way to be part of two different series like this. But the Kingdom of Wolf series is actually a set of books where a whole bunch of different authors write in what I assume is a related werewolf shifter universe. I don't know for certain because I've only read these books and Rabid by Raven Kennedy and Ivy Asher. I am still interested in continuing the Kingdom of Wolf series to find out like if this is actually a connected universe, if any of these authors do good paranormal romance, that kind of thing. But I am taking a quick break from it for right now because that was a lot of bad writing quirky girl BS that just didn't appeal to me me for one sitting. If you're looking for more information on what I didn't like or why I didn't like, I did do a uh, cozy reading vlog that included this as part of the Love in the Night Paranormal Readathon. You can check that vlog out here. Next is going to be Halloween Werewolf by Kestra Pingree. I didn't even get through the first chapter of this in the Love in the Night Paranormal Readathon before I decided it wasn't for me. This was a book that I was able to get for free in one of those Kindle deals. I thought the title made this an appropriate time to check it out. The writing style, the general storytelling, none of that was gonna work. And at this point in time I've sort of DNF'd it and moved on. So three star reads. Falling Down by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. This is part of the Boy in the Iron Box series and I have a separate video on that you can check out here. Of the six stories included, this one was the one that I liked the least. It was a really slow start to this collection. It really front loads all the stuff that I don't give a crap about into this one story. And then everything else gets progressively better from here. It doesn't help that I listen to these books instead of reading them and I did not appreciate the choice of audio reader they had. He has like this really deep slightly accented gravelly voice and because of that I couldn't read it like a 1.3 speed like I usually prefer. It is still sitting at three stars because even though I didn't like what was happening I think a lot of people who are more into like military fiction might enjoy this kind of setup and like procedural real world establishment moment which moves me into The Pit and the Box by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. This one again is a huge improvement from the first one but I still think it's just doing like the average things I expect del Toro stories to do. It's much better than the first and I think it actually shows like quite a range between these two books what I would qualify both as three stars but this one is much closer to four stars and the first one is much closer to two if we're talking about that range. Next is Midnight Exhibit by Eddie Jenner, Stephen Graham Jones, Renee Miller, and Philip Frasisi. This is book one in the Rewind or Die horror anthology and I also have a video that I put out about this collection that you can check out here. The TLDR is that this Midnight Exhibit volume one is like an anthology within an anthology which makes it very hard to review. As far as like the outer wrapper goes and Stephen Graham Jones's contribution I'd say that they're closer to like a low three. And then if we're talking about Renee Miller, she gets a five star and Philip Francisi gets like a three and a half bordering on four star. I just end up putting most anthology collections somewhere in like a three star roundabout unless there's something incredibly standout or incredibly awful in them. Next is Dark City Omega by Elizabeth Stevens because these are such relationship focused stories when I don't like the relationships or when I think there's something like toxic or unpleasant going on in them. It's very hard for me to rate them higher than three stars. And that's what's going on 
on here in Dark City Omega, I had a moment where like maybe the first third, even the first half of this, I thought this relationship was going to get redeemed and we were going to have something that I could sort of like appreciate or like navigate to liking. It was very like tenuous, tightrope walky. It takes this turn where the alpha protagonist who has a lot of power and say over their love interest ends up chaining her to a bed and like leaving her there for an indeterminate amount of time. And as soon as that happens, I was just out on them ever reconciling or redeeming themselves. And the story goes a long way to sort of like justify why he made this decision, to say that it was a wrong decision, but like he could come back from it. And I just don't agree. You can't come back from that. Maybe like he could come back from it in like terms of eventually be forgiven by her, but not in like reestablish relationship. And certainly if they wanted to reestablish that relationship after this incident, you'd have to give me like a whole book's worth of time to cool down. You gave me less than like the back third of the book. That said, I do really enjoy the world building. To not like overly belabor the point, I do talk about this one in my Love in the Night Paranormal Readathon, and one of the things I end up doing is comparing it to Fourth Wing, and I think that overall this is a better story than Fourth Wing, even though I liked reading the first book in Fourth Wing better than this. And if you want more details on how this compares to Fourth Wing, I would definitely check out that previous reading vlog over here. Moving me into One Night, One Bite by Drea Anderson. This was the book pick for the Love in the Night Paranormal Readathon, so obviously I read it along with everybody else. This is a paranormal romance that's set up in the world like the paranormal beings are each part of like mafias, like fighting for land and power and titles. And as a result, like you have to think about the characters, their arcs and their archetypes similarly to how you would in a mafia romance. But the problem here is I don't really like or read mafia romance. So this has a lot of problematic elements that are stereotypical in the mafia romance genre. That said, I do really like our lead protagonist. I think she is a ton of fun. I really liked her, was rooting for her, and was invested in her happiness. And perhaps that was the problem is because I was looking for her to have a healthy relationship and to be better off. And in a lot of ways, I think this book ends and she is in a more precarious position than when she started. And she worked really hard to get out of like a bad marriage before this book starts off. I don't know, I guess I just wanted her to get a chance to do a victory lap or something before getting caught up in trouble. Next is gonna be Hairspray and Switchblades by V. Castro. This is another one that's part of the Rewind or Die series and has a much longer review here. It was really interesting to read a shifter story that focused in horror versus shifter romance. And I thought I thought it was funny because they do a little faded me insta love moment in the back third of this. I hated it. I didn't think there was any chemistry between our main character and this dude. While I could see it a little bit from her side, like why she would have a crush on him, why she'd want to start a relationship, when he just like comes out and is like, I'm head over heels in love with you girl, and we've only had one real conversation, that took me so out of the story. I was done with that romance from then on out. And if this is indicative of how the author tells love stories, then I don't ever want to read any love stories by V. Castro. But if we're talking about like characters, world building, different events, there are a bunch of parts of the story that are executed really well and that highly appeal to me. Unfortunately, for whatever reasons, while I was reading it, I didn't want to be reading it and I just wanted to finish so bad. But there's nothing I can point to. It must have just been a mood thing. And that's why it's here at three stars when probably should be sitting at like four stars. And that rolls me into Soul Soul Survivor by Zachary Ashford. This is another one of those rewind or die stories and you can get a significantly more detailed review of it here. The TLDR for this wrap-up is that it is a beast horror slasher happening on a deserted island kind of thing. It's average. It's doing what it sets out to do well enough. But it's not adding like any of those extra layers of complication that sort of need to be in there for me to give it like more stars. If you're looking for like a summer slasher or like beast horror, then I think this is really going to appeal to you. And if you're looking for like a horror story that's maybe doing a little bit more than like grotesque imagery and kill counts, this is probably going to be one you could skip. Next is going to be Food Fright by Nico Bell. There's another one that exists in Rewind or Die and has a much longer review here. My overall summary of this is that 
it has some creative fun elements because it incorporates like bakery kills as part of the horror and I think that's fun. And I think it does a really great job with the young high school girls and their relationships both like the positive and the negative ones. And I think Cassie gets a great arc in this story really like learns something, grows and develops. But there's like a whole second half about witches and teachers and stuff like that that I just don't think had any place in this story and would have been so much better if we hadn't incorporated it. I think if it had been just the girls and like a horror haunting possession revenge kind of story we would be sitting at like an easy four stars. Nico Bell has great writing. I'm definitely interested in reading more from her. Next is The Kelping by Jan Stitchcomb. This is also part of the Rewinder Die series and is here with a much longer review. The short review is that this is a very confusing story. There are parts of it that are low two stars and parts of it that are like executing highly at four stars and that's how it ended up here sitting at three. I think as a story it's really unsatisfying. It is least satisfying of the eight rewind or die novella horror stories I read this October but it's playing with some really fun engaging interesting ideas. It's just not executing on them well and it's incorporating way too many things for it to sort of like settle in on something and let you focus and enjoy. And that rolls me up into four star reads. The Hunted and The Risen by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. I'm combining these two short stories together because they both get four stars and really it's all part of the same arc in this Amazon Originals collection. This is where the story really kicks off and goes full gear into the supernatural horror element. None of it is unexpected or surprising but it is exactly what I wanted so it's delighting on all cylinders. And next is going to be Infested by Carol Gore which has a very long and detailed review you can read here but the short version of it is that it is chilling and terrifying on all fronts. So this story is supposed to be about giant bugs that are kind of like attacking humans while humans try to survive the onslaught and that sounds like a lot of fun and is a great person versus environment kind of conflict. It delivers on that and is amazing in that regard. However However, there is some content notices that you should probably be aware of going in because the back third ends up giving you like a fairly graphic essay and in the beginning as well as like throughout the story the main character's father has um, chosen to end their own life when that main character was 11. The mystery and the reveal of why they did that sort of like haunts that whole book. So if you're not there for a end of life or a potentially fairly graphic essay that's committed by a character close to our main character this might not be for you. And it really does sort of come out of nowhere like at least in my reading experience. I understood that this character was impacted by the loss of their father at an early age not knowing why their father had done it. I sort of figured we might find out why and that it might relate back to some other things in the story but how they connected that all when we were already at the peak of like this bug versus humanity moment and that was really working and so much fun and going so well and then we just took this turn into something dark and ugly that made everything like not okay. I'm not really very sensitive to those kind of topics and it upset me in a level that I haven't been upset by in a little while. So I just wanted to give anyone who's thinking about this book a warning that that's there before they check it out. I still really had a great time, highly enjoyed it. I think I'd have preferred if it wasn't in there. I see what the author was trying to do and to a certain extent it works but there's a bunch of other things that pulls in and that creates issues for me. And again, I talk about all of that in the longer review here, but just know that if you wanted to try it. Next is Cold Hearted by Heather Guerre. This is another story that I read for part of the Love in the Night Paranormal Romance Readathon. I picked it up off of Heather over at Hia Booktube's recommendation. She said this book was like Kate C. Wells' Rejected Mate series 100% the way I would describe it. If you're looking for a werewolf shifter romance that has that cold winter vibe for this time of year, this is perfect because it's set in Alaska. So it's got all that fun like winter snow kind of weather. It's got that cold moon aesthetic, the wolves howling up the moon, this like teacher who's uprooted every element of her life to go to Alaska. And like she gets to discover this whole hidden world. And the teacher has some stuff going on too. Like she's recovering from an abusive relationship and sort of trying to pull her life back together afterwards. It's a really slow burn romance. It's 
very cozy. I loved it. It was probably one of the more fun um, werewolf shifter stories I've read in a while. But rolling us into five star reviews. Siege and Encounter by Guillermo del Toro and Chuck Hogan. These are the last two short stories in The Boy in the Iron Box. The close of Encounter does leave us open potentially to a sequel. And low key, there's part of me that would love to watch a TV show series that picks up right where this story ends. As a horror novella, ending right here is a lot of fun and it like continues the tradition of horror where like it's got that dark melancholy kind of ending and where you know only worse things are going to happen from here. Next is Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess, another one of the rewind or die stories with a much longer review here. This to me is a perfect dark romance novella. I know it was supposed to be horror, it is giving that horror vibe, but it's also got this relationship um, going on in between two of the antagonists. Both these antagonists are doing like bloody gruesome things, which is where I think the dark romance vibe goes, but their specific relationship between the two of them is fairly healthy and like based off of communication and what seems like mutual love and respect. So I was like sort of rooting for the villains in this specific case because I liked their relationship so much. It is definitely a kill or get killed kind of story, so that's really fun. It's set in like this closed down carnival and I love all those fun carny vibes. It's got like a little bit of that 80s feel to it going into like an early 2000. Having those two eras represented this way makes sense when you read the book. Trust me it's really good. It's campy and a little bit comedic all along with like that traditional horror slasher kind of feeling. I can't think of anything else the story could have given me that would have elevated it further than it is. And that rolls me into hell Bells by Lisa Quigley. Also available in the Rewind or Die. I think this review is pretty short because I just love everything that's happening and I want you to go ahead and read this and part of what's exciting about it is like discovering all the elements for yourself. I do like that we're mostly following this cast of four girls. Our main character like is in this hot and heavy first love relationship. There's a religious narrative happening and it's all going down in the way that I prefer to see my religious narratives happen. Just everything about it is working perfectly. If you're a pretty hardcore Christian, you might want to skip this one because it is definitely reinterpreting religion in a way that might not be your cup of tea. But if you're down for just like some fun, like sort of poking at you fiction, then you still might be into this, even if you are a pretty uh, religious Christian. And for all of us non-Christians, I think you could just go in and have a good time. I can't lie, it's a little bit mean-spirited in how they're portraying God and the devil and like following a faith versus not following a faith, but it's doing so in a way that could be very cathartic to people who've had to put up with an annoying Christian ever in their life. And that's going to be everything I read this October. I blew my reading goal out of the water this month with all of these little novellas and fun scary story side projects I was trying to participate in this month. Talk to me in those comments down below. Tell me what your favorite October read was. And if you got this far and you've got nothing else for me, give me a bat emoji in those comments down below. And as always, keep reading.